like in this video, I'm going to continue creating my NES sound chip recreation in Max MSP, and more specifically, I'm going to add a few more channels. As you might know, the NES sound system has five channels and we have recreated two of them so far, these two rectangular oscillators right here. So now in this video, I'm going to add the other three channels. One is a triangular oscillator, one is a noise oscillator, noise a pitch noise that's usually used for percussion, and the last one is kind of an 8-bit sampler that is going to degrade the incoming audio into that very old NES 8-bit sampled kind of sound. First of all, I'm going to delete this note in because I'm not really concerned with uh, playing everything and assigning the right knobs in this video. In the next video, I'm going to tie all of these together by adding much more MIDI controller functionality, changing different uh, different voices with these pads, you know, changing even more controls using these knobs. But for now, I just want to create the right objects and get some sound out. And in fact, my job is pretty easy right now because I created these sub patches which contain all the objects I might need for other kinds of oscillators. So for instance, since I want a triangular oscillator, all I have to do is to copy and paste the sub patcher again and rename it into something more appropriate. Let's say uh, triosc. I'm not going to put in a number because we need just one triangular oscillator. And now I can lock the patch, double click to go into the sub patch, and I simply need to do a single thing. I just need to change this rect tilde, this, this rectangular oscillator object into tri tilde, which is a triangular oscillator. And other than that, it behaves in the exact same way, it accepts the same kind of information, frequency, duty cycle, etc., and it sends out an audio containing that waveform. You might notice that this scope here is a bit goofy, it's going a bit nuts, uh, and the reason probably is that it, is, it does not know exactly what to play, so let's give it a random uh, frequency out, 440. Now, the audio coming out of here is not being routed to an easy deck or any kind of audio output object, so we are not hearing anything, but this is what is coming out of tri, a triangular wave, and it is called triangular because, well, you guessed it, it's shaped like a triangle. And just like the rectangular oscillator, I can change its pulse width in the exact same way. In this case, it slants this triangle a bit to the left, a bit to the right. In fact, I think we can try and hear this, try to see what it sounds like. So I'm going to bring back note out. Oh, I mean note in note out for ascending notes out of Max into other MIDI software or objects. Okay, and then if I do this, and if I get rid of these rectangular oscillator patch chords for now, because we don't really need those. I think I can make it even a bit louder. There we go. As you see, it's a completely different kind of sound. It's it's a bit more smoother. It's usually used for uh, for the bass, for really lower sounds, the bass parts of most MIDI game soundtracks. And changing the pulse width, if I changed all the way up, it creates this kind of sawtooth, but not exactly sawtooth like way, which is pretty cool. And to be honest, I'm kind of cheating here because the NES sound chip did not have duty cycle controls for the triangular oscillator, but I mean, it's already here and I, I think it's okay to cheat a bit. The only thing I want to change is, again, this send and receive objects. Note of two sends an information to another oscillator, so I'm just going to call these guys note of three. And there we go. Well, that was pretty simple. And uh, moving on, we can do a similar thing with uh, with noise. But when we think of noise, I first want to show you the you know the quintessential noise object in Max. If you want to create white noise, you know that kind of sound, you would be inclined to create noise tilde, right? And it would. Uh, it has an inlet that says uh, ignore this inlet, I find that quite funny, and it sends out, uh, yeah, the noise with a capital T. 
And I'm going to plug this in to my audio output, but I'm just going to make it a bit quiet because this is pretty loud. And like that, you get noise, but you have no control over the noise. You can't really trigger different kinds of noise or different pitches of noise by pressing your keyboard. You can use a bandpass filter some or some other combination of filters to simulate that, but there is an easier object to do this in Max, and that is RAND, which will create a band-limited random signal. In fact, we can look at the help file, the help patcher, to see what it exactly does. And there, look at this, it can receive an initial frequency. It acts just like an oscillator. We can even change the current frequency like this. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a, you know, a random noise, a kind of like a white noise, but it will be around a certain frequency. So it's going to be quote unquote pitched noise. The sounds may already remind you of the, the NES sound effects, and these were also used for sound effects, you know, when you're shooting a gun or there's a fireball or something, it used to make these kinds of noises. But more interestingly, this was also used to create percussion. And before I get into that, let's uh, try to recreate this. And again, I'm going to be very practical. I'm going to be very lazy, and I'm going to just copy my triangular oscillator sub patch, and I'm going to name it to noise. Right, and I can double click it after locking it, which will show me the sub patch. Now, once again, I'm going to take this and instead of try, this is going to be rand tilde. Remember the tilde, make sure that it is an MSP object. Denotes that there is audio processing afoot. Now, as you see here, the controls for the duty cycle are gone because there is no duty cycle. This is all random waves. There is nothing periodic going on here that we can change around a bit. So I'm just going to delete this part. And I guess we can have vibrato, though it's not really necessary. Yeah, you know what? We, we don't even need the vibrato. I don't think vibrato is going to make much of a difference here. So the signal coming out from the information, I can simply send it here. And now instead of for triangular oscillator, let's uh, let's plug or note in here to see what this kind of noise sounds like when played by the keyboard. Is my audio context off? My audio context is off and now it's on and there. I guess we should get rid of our triangular oscillator too. And now this should make a nice noise. Yes, that is a noise that we exactly want. This is the quintessential pitched noise. And the cool thing about this is it's in fact possible to shape the sound wave into something that resembles uh, you know, percussion, like these, these kinds of hints. And this was what was used to create the percussion parts, the percussion sounds of many NES games and similar old 8-bits, you know, those old school soundtracks. Of course, to get really deep into this, we would need to start creating envelopes for our sound, and we will eventually get to that in the future videos. I'm going to get into those kinds of things, but for now, I think it's enough to have this kind of pitched noise and you can improve upon this in any way you want. The only thing I want to change is this note off because this is what triggered the additional tri triangle wave sound from before. I was sending this information to note off 3, but I want this to be note off 4. And now it should still function, I believe. I gotta say, this sound is incredibly 8-bit to me, I mean just not know a single sound effect would have such an effect and you know make me remember those old school games all right cool so now the only part that is left is the, the sampling right and as you know there are a lot of ways to get audio inside max i mean if i want i can create a buffer for example you know my cool buff or i can create a playlist tilde to play objects i can drag in stuff and uh I can even use the input, right? I can use easy, I believe uh, it's easy ADC. It's going to be the complement 
of easy easy DAC to easy DAC, which is going to send out the input coming from the microphone as an audio signal. And for these for the purposes of today, I'm again going to keep it simple and I'm just going to use uh, one of the built-in contents. I believe this cheers, this sound effect is included in all of Max and it's just pretty much a bunch of people cheering. If I plug this here, I believe we can hear it ourselves. Okay, so how do we how do we degrade this? How do we make the sound eight bit? You know that that, that bit crushed. Uh, I don't even know if this is a real sound kind of sound. Well, we only have to use degrade tilde. In fact, let's look at the help patch of degrade, and it has one of my favorite uh, remarks in the help patch, which is this: If you have to ask why, you probably won't find this object useful. Well, luckily for us, we know <laughs> we do not have to ask why. We know exactly why we are using this. So we can just take a quick look. And here, degrade's first inlet takes in an audio signal, you know, containing the sound. We want to degrade, reduce the sampling rate and the, the word side, the bits. And uh, this, these two parameters, the sampling rate and the bits, we can either change by sending messages to degrade tilde's second and third inlets, or we can just give it as arguments. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the uh, effective sampling rate, which is going to be on a range from zero to one. One meaning the, you know, the actual sampling rate of the audio file, 0 0.5 meaning half of that sampling rate. And word side bits is an integer, you know, it could be 24 bits, 12 bits, and of course, for the aesthetic, I'm going to make it eight bits. So I can make this degrade and let's say I want it to be 10% of the sampling rate of the original signal, which should make it very bit crushed. And then of course we make it that sweet, sweet 8-bit. And now listen to how this sounds. Ah, that is exactly the kind of uh, silly 8-bit sound effect I like. In fact, let's let's try that with other kinds of sounds too. I always like to experiment. Um, like for example, how about the elephants? Some kind of elephant sounds. How does this sound? <laughs> Actually, it does not sound that bad. Maybe I would need to reduce the sampling rate even further. Ah, oh, there we go. No, it sounds super bit crushed. And let's lastly let's uh, also go for karaoke. I'm going to put this back to 0.1. Ah, fantastic. All right, so here, there you have it. We have all the five channels of the NES sound system. The first two sounds are controlled by poly, it's a polyphonic, you know, two voice rectangular oscillator. Then we have a separate triangular oscillator. We have this noise channel that is still somewhat pitched. And then we have a degraded, uh, you know, sample playback that is still within the 8-bit aesthetic. Next video we are really going to going for that final score where I'm going to map all of these to these MIDI controllers in order to have a bunch more functionality and you know actually be able to play songs or little you know pieces of music using my keyboard that utilizes this patch. Until then, thank you for watching.